Hello. Hi, Dave. I, I've dialed you in, so you're connected. Okay, because I hate it. I was having trouble getting through. Okay, let me just, we're getting a feedback from your on. We're getting a bit of a feedback with your microphone. So when you're not speaking, Dave, if you can push star six on your phone, it will mute you. And star six again will unmute you. Okay. Expecting Bill, and I don't think he's jumped on yet. Expecting Archie. Okay, so Taylor has started our recording. Uh, so just a reminder, we are live broadcasting. We may have one or two committee members still join us. And I would ask if you could mute your lines while you're not speaking, just so that we can avoid any feedback. So with that, Mr. Chair, we are live. If you would like to, uh, to start the meeting. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the, uh, to the uh, March the 2nd, 21st uh, Forestry Committee meeting. March the 2nd, 21st uh, Forestry Committee meeting. It's, it's good to see so many of you rejoining us in uh, 2021. Oops, sorry, Dave, I think your microphone just muted. Can you push star six on your phone, please? Okay. There we go. Sorry, we lost you there just for a second. All right. So hopefully things by mid-2021 uh, will be back to some semblance of order. And uh, the, the, only, the only other comment I had was I was going through the, um, the forestry, SNC forestry report, and uh, I was glad to see that uh, there was only one <coughs> uh, non-conforming item located, and I think that just speaks volumes for, for the uh, South Nation staff. Great. Thank you, Dave. Um, I think, Dave, I'm going to help you out a little bit because for some reason we're getting a lot of feedback from your line. So um, perhaps to make it a little bit easier, um, for moving and seconding of um, items, uh, we'll call out uh, a name. And if you're in agreement to move and second, we'll proceed. And then we'll ask, instead of all in favor, we'll do any opposed, just to make it a little bit easier for folks this morning. So Mr. Chair, we can begin um, with the approval of the committee agenda. And there is no supplemental agenda today, so it's just the main package that was circulated to you. So um, I see Doug and Maurice. Uh, do you agree to move the agenda? Okay, does anyone have any changes or additions to the agenda? I don't see any. You can also raise your hand if uh, if you're on mute, if you need to speak. Um, Dave, I see no questions or comments. If you'd like to call the question. Oh, Maurice has his hand up. Just go ahead, Maurice. Oh, sorry, you're muted. Am I alive now? You are. Good. Okay. okay. Nothing. No comment. Perfect. Thank you. Dave, you can uh, call the question for approval of the agenda. Okay. okay, I need a mover. So we have Doug second. Thompson moving and Maurice uh, seconding. Everyone agree? Everyone agree? I'm seeing hands go up. We are good. Thank you very much. Uh, number three is declaration of conflict of interest. Does anyone have any um, declarations of conflict of interest this morning? Seeing none. 
We'll move on to our staff update. Ellie, I'm just going to lower your hand for you. And we'll start with Pat. Pat, you're muted. I was just bringing up my copy of the, the presentation. Uh, Rhonda, I'm seeing uh, your screen on the uh, in the uh, forestry committee meeting, and not the PowerPoint. Okay, hang on a second. Let me try this again. Is that everybody, everybody may have that. Thanks, Pat. Let's try sharing again. Seen the slide deck now, Pat? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So the uh, the the working force uh, uh, just an update on certification, and there is a more detailed re report in the uh, meeting agenda uh, package. Uh, as you know, uh, under FSC certification, we're subject to annual auditing and reporting. Uh, in 2020, uh, the forest was uh, audited uh, or under the group certificate. Uh, both the SDG and SNC County Forest were not part of the field portion of that audit, uh, but we uh, uh, are subject to the uh, same conditions uh, as a member of the group and uh, with more detail later, uh, there was one mi minor nonconformity and one observation made. Uh, already in uh, 2021, uh, we uh, were subject to an internal audit. This is done by the group certificate uh, holder and the, both the SDG County Forest and the SNC Forest were uh, subject to those and basically we passed. Uh, and all, all things were compliant with the regulations. Again, uh, uh, more on uh, the forest. Uh, this winter, uh, this past winter, we've uh, conducted a uh, harvest in the Warwick Forest area and um, this was the we're cur currently this was, uh, harvest was just completed uh, uh, last month. The uh, we're still uh, awaiting the final uh, mill receipts, uh, but the estimated harvest numbers are, are there, close to 1,200 uh, uh, cubic meters, and we're currently estimating the revenue at uh, just over $11,000. Good morning, members of the committee. Um, so, similarly to the SDNG forest, we also had a harvest on um, our SNC uh, forest properties. Um, so, we had a harvest on SNC 17, uh, which is in North Stormont in Gravel Hill, so just off the 138. It's very accessible uh, property. And uh, staff marked 50 cubic meters of white pine and 560 cubic meters of white spruce to be harvested. Uh, when the contractors started work over there, we also noticed an additional area which uh, it was full of ash, all affected by the EAB. And underneath, there was a good amount of uh, desirable regeneration, so sugar maple and bur oaks. And so we decided to offer uh, all ash trees in that area to the contractor. Uh, to help, you know, salvage some firewood and at the same time release that regeneration. Hello. So not only in that uh, additional area, but also in the plantation areas, uh, the contractor harvested a total of fish, uh, 500 cubic meters of green ash. And, I beg your pardon? Uh, Somebody's Hi, Archie. I've just I've dialed you into the meeting, Archie. So we're just in the slide uh, show update. 
that what? We're just doing the slideshow update, Archie. So I've dialed you in. I'm going to put your phone on mute. Um, you can push star six on your phone if you'd like to speak. I'm just going to mute you now. Okay, yeah. Thanks, Archie. Um, so for that harvest, we estimate a revenue of $7,000 at this point. Um, but this will be determined event very shortly. Uh, last year was a very busy year within the forest, and uh, uh, that applies to uh, the people that use our uh, properties for uh, recreational uh, purposes. Uh, the slide you're seeing is was presented to the uh, communications committee, and I thought it would be of interest to the forestry committee as well. Uh, you can mm -hmm. see the uh, light blue uh, colors, how the uh, this is representing the numbers of people that are uh, using the forest. You can see at the far right for each of the properties listed there uh, how dramatic the increase in uh, activity was in terms of people using our forests. The last two, uh, or the last four properties, uh, Two Creeks Forest, Warwick Forest, uh, the Robert Graham Forest, and Oshman Forest are all part of our uh, uh, forest uh, properties, uh, and you can see that that trend of uh, increased activity uh, uh, continuing on those uh, on our forest trails. Uh, the first two properties are uh, two of our parks within urban areas. Of course, the use is uh, much higher there, but uh, overall, a, a, a lot of uh, activity going on in the the forest and people are enjoying getting out and using our trail systems. Uh, with that higher use through the winter months, uh, as incre we've increased the maintenance on our trails. We do uh, groom the hiking trails uh, so that it's uh, easy for people to uh, get out and enjoy the uh, uh, our properties for uh, just hiking, uh, uh, cross-country skiing, and snowshoeing. Um, don't believe the uh, the. Uh, it, this was the video uh, that was shared to uh, uh, both the board and the uh, communications committee, uh, but it's not active uh, on the slide. You can view all of our videos on our YouTube channel. The next uh, slide is we renewed our uh, agreements with the uh, uh, local uh, Upper Canada Snowmobile uh, Association. Uh, I did have some uh, communications with them and uh, again this uh, increase in outdoor activities through the uh, winter months uh, and uh, uh, the uh, COVID pandemic has uh, uh, increased their um, um, activity and of course their maintenance as well. They issued over uh, 12,000 permits locally, uh, which was, represented a 13% increase over last year. Uh, they do budget to annually for about 6,200 hours of uh, trail grooming. And with the increased activity, they've had to increase this substantially, as you can see in the slide. So similarly to um, to the parks and our conservation areas, we are still uh, doing the tree risk assessments. And so as you've uh, seen through the past couple of years, we've been doing tree risk assessment on uh, an annual basis on our conservation areas. Um, and so following the last tree risk assessment that was done in 2020, more than 50% of uh, our conservation areas have been mitigated. So the trees that were identified as uh, high risk trees or imminent risk trees uh, were um, either removed or pruned. Um, when you see, for example, Jessup's Falls, that's half done. Well, only the landscape area has been completed. Um, the forest area will be done uh, next week, I think, by staff. Um, and the most complicated trees will be uh, contracted out. 
but on the most part, um, it's it's a lot of work because we need to catch up on many many years um, of maintenance that needed to be done, and also the ash trees, of course, uh, created a lot of work to to be done by us. Um, so the ash is our main concern and the main trees that we are uh, mitigating at this point. Um, there are a few that will be mitigated in, the f in this 2021 year, um, and a couple will need to be contracted out just because there are a lot more trees or uh, a lot more infrastructure in the park and um, staff is not equipped to be able to remove those trees. Um, so if you go to the next slide, um, for 2021, we are still going to reassess um, our, all our, of our conservation areas. And of course, the workload will be much less than the past two years because we have been mitigating um, all the assessed trees for the past two years um, or planning to. And there is two conservation areas that have not been assessed yet. So those are uh, Warwick, and uh, the other one is Two Creeks. Um, and those two are all of a forest setting. And so um, the assessment is a bit different in a sense that uh, we might be looking at more of a forest <laughs> harvest uh, type of mitigation instead of a of a single tree, um, but those are still to be discussed and planned uh, for the future. Just before we go on, I've muted, muted the ones that have called in on the phone. We're just getting a bit of feedback. So again, if you're on the phone, if you can keep your phone muted and then to speak, it's star six to unmute. Francois, I saw your hand up uh, go up a slide or two ago. Did you have a question? Oh, you're muted. Yes, it was for Pat, but I see Pat has oh. just left. So, so I'll, <laughs> okay, I'll we'll come it. back. We'll come uh, back to him. It's, it's no big issue. Okay. okay. Uh, good morning, members of the committee. So in June last year, based on interest of the 50 million tree program that we gathered over the winter months, we set an ambitious goal to plant 200,000 trees in spring 2021. And I'm very, very happy to say that with all of the hard work staff have put in, we've not only reached, but will surpass that goal this spring. So we currently have over 229,000 trees reserved for spring 2021, which includes 50 million tree projects, over-the-counter orders, La Rose forest planting and our trees for the municipal tree giveaways. Staff will be working with 69 landowners on 50 million tree projects and have over 50 orders placed through the over the counter program. So since 1990, this is the highest tree allocation that we have had. The last previous was in 1993 where SNC planted 196,000 trees. So since 1990, SNC has planted over 3.3 million trees across the jurisdiction and will plant its 3.5 millionth tree this spring. And again, this spring, SNC will be working with its municipal partners for a municipal tree giveaway, where each municipality will receive $500 worth of tree seedlings, which has been allotted from the SNC budget. Staff have created and updated fact sheets for each of the species that will be available to landowners that has information about growing conditions, size, wildlife value, things like that. And there are 10 species available to choose from, which includes a mix of hardwoods, conifers and shrubs. So hopefully something for everyone. And there will be 16 giveaways planned for this spring. We currently have five municipalities who have confirmed an additional $500 contribution for trees and have an additional five municipalities pending budget. So SNC will also be providing trees to Plenty Canada and the Mohawk Council of Aquasasne and have again reached out to local hospitals again this year looking to provide staff with a free tree similar to what we did last year. Good morning everyone. Uh, this is just to uh, keep you guys in, uh, up to date on what we have for forest stewards. At present, we have 22 forest stewards uh, and they're monitoring 42 of the properties. Uh, a lot of them uh, overlap each other, which is fine. It's it's great to have more eyes on there. You, 
you get to see more, but you can still see there are still some that uh, we, we could have more people to uh, look over. But these guys are really helpful in providing us data and and providing us with the, the you know, on the ground knowledge that we're not able to do every day. So it's great because it keeps the works department guys up to date on on hazards and stuff like that on the property. So it's, it's really beneficial. And I have uh, five new stewards just starting up. So they'll be they'll be starting in shortly as well. Great. Um, Chris has a, um, an agenda item on this a uh, little bit later, but I wanted just to let you know that uh, we've again submitted a request to um, Ontario Power Generation's Regional Biodiversity Funding Program. They had an open call um, at the beginning of the year. So this, uh, this round of funding, they're focusing on Indigenous partnerships with First Nation communities. So we have submitted a th three-year proposal that has a number of projects under it. Um, the first one is to continue building and developing the Healing Place site that we planted last year on our property in Shanley and looking at adding some additional sites as well as some education and outreach material um, online uh, for that site. So that's the weaving Western science and traditional knowledge through two-eyed seeing. We are proposing to do some shoreline restoration at Oak Valley and some planting along the shoreline of the South Nation River on the properties that we own the stretch from Oak Valley to Cass Bridge. And then we have some additional um, First Nation partnership projects on South Nation forests. These are revisits to some projects we, uh, we completed back in the early 2000s, so some work around black ash, some work around um, municipal plants. So Chris will touch on a number of these partnerships in the, uh, in the agenda package a little bit later on. Just wanted to let you know that this has been submitted and we should know hopefully by the end of the month whether or not we're successful. I also just wanted to let you know if you haven't seen the postings yet that um, South Nation Conservation has been working um, with both the United Counties of Prescott Russell and Stormont Dundas and Glengarry along with Raisin Region Conservation on a natural heritage system. Um, this is part of the county's official plan processing. So the draft um, NHS or natural heritage system uh, is available for public comment. Our staff did a few weeks ago um, do some live uh, broadcasting of presentations on our YouTube channel so you can find those recorded presentations there. There's one specific to SDNG and the second one for UCPR. Um, again, if you're interested in providing uh, any feedback or if you'd like to see the draft maps, they are available on our website at nation.on.ca backslash NHS. I believe that wraps up the slideshow. I'm just going to do a quick roll call because we had a few committee members join us during the, uh, the slide deck. So just to let everyone know who's on. I have Dave Robertson on the phone. And just a reminder for those on the phone, I currently have you muted. So you'll need to star six yourself to unmute. Um, Alain Bertrand, Archie Byers on the phone. Maurice, Dorothy, Elizabeth, Steve, Murray, Glenn, Francois Saint Amour, Bill Smurl, Doug Thompson, Ron Tuners um, are all online. We have regrets today from Lloyd Benedict, Ben DeHan, Tony Ricard, and our South Nation Chair and Vice Chair George DeRuz and Pierre LaRue. It's just a quick roll call. So Mr. Chair, we can move on to the minutes from the last meeting. You'll find those in your package on page three. Again, these are the meeting minutes from uh, the meeting in November 24th, 2020. Looking for a mover and seconder. I see Bill and Ron Tudor. Oh, I see Maurice's thumb up. Thanks, Maurice. So moved by Bill, seconded by Maurice. Are there any um, questions, comments, edits for those draft minutes? Yeah, I see none. Uh, Mr. Chair, if you'd like to unmute yourself, star six, we're ready for the question to approve the Forestry Committee meeting minutes of November 24th. We need a, a, mo a mover for the... So we have Bill, Bill moved it and Marie seconded it, so we just need you to call the question for approval. Okay, everyone approve? Everyone approve? See the hands up. Great, thank you. That is carried.
and we'll move on to new business on your agenda, page nine. The request for approval election of committee chair. So again, annually we do uh, appoint a committee chair. Um, at, in order to do so, uh, we first must uh, have a motion to appoint a um, uh, an acting committee chair in order to run the election. So the recommendation uh, on page nine is that committee members appoint Rhonda Bout's team lead special projects as the acting committee chair. And further that the South Nation Administrative Bylaw 15.3 all elections shall be in accordance with the procedures for election officers be adhered to. Moved by Bill. Thank you, Bill. And uh, I see Ron seconding that. Uh, any opposed? Okay, great. That motion is carried. So with that, as acting chair, I will declare the position of uh, Forestry Committee Chair vacant. And I will be calling for nominations uh, from the floor for the position of committee chair for the year 2021. Uh, just a reminder that nominations do not require a seconder, and I will call for nominations three times. So the, this is my first call for nominations for the position of forestry committee chair. And just a reminder that you may be muted. Francois here. I'll nominate Mr. Robinson. That nomination. Dave, uh, your, your name has been put forward for the position of committee chair. Do you wish your name to stand? No, I think I'm going to, I'd like to stay on the committee, but, but not as chair. Thank you, Dave. But in turn, but in turn I'd like to nominate, like to nominate, and nominate Glenn. Glenn. Thank you for that nomination. Glenn, do you wish your name to stand for position of chair? Glenn, you are muted, so you'll need to star six to unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. And I will call for a third and final time for nominations for the position of forestry committee chair. see no hands and I hear no further nominations. So with that, I'll close the nominations and I'll be looking for a mover and seconder to appoint Mr. Glenn Mackey as the elected chair of the Forestry Committee for 2021. And I'll move that by Dave. And Bill seconded, seconded by, by Bill. Thank you. All those in favor. I should say any opposed, <laughs> it'll be easier. Perfect, with that, uh, thank you very much. And Mr. Chair uh, Mackey, I will turn the meeting over to you. Thank you, Rhonda. Yes, I appreciate the uh, nomination, Dave, and, and the uh, uh, seconder. So uh, I'll try to do my best. Uh, just to give you a little bit background on myself. Uh, I started, retired 15 years ago, but I started with Water Source Protection Committee. I was on there for six years. Uh, after that, I was on the board of directors for six years. I've also been on the Clean Water Committee uh, for six years, Forestry Committee for two years. I'm also involved with Alice as well as uh, some committees within the uh, Township of Augusta. Uh, the Township of Augusta, of course, is the headwaters for the South Nation uh, Conservation Area. and uh, we look at working with people throughout the uh, conservation area. Uh, with that, we have the next item on the agenda, uh, 6B, uh, which is the uh, request for approval of 2021 committee membership. Rhonda, do you want me to read it, the recommendation? or? Um, I can read it for you. It'll save you uh, re reading that. So, and I actually do have uh, an amendment now with the new uh, chair election. So, on page 14 of your agenda package, the Forestry Committee recommends the following membership to the Board of Directors for 2021 Francois Allard, private citizen, Lloyd Benedict, Mohawks of Aquasasne, Elaine Bertrand, private citizen, Archie Byers, private citizen, Marie Chabot, pri private citizen. Dorothy Hamilton, Ontario Woodlot Association, Stormont, Dundas and Glengarry Chapter, 
Elizabeth Holmes, Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, is a non-voting member. Steve Hunter from the United Counties of Prescott Russell. Murray Inch, private citizen. Glenn Mackey, now committee chair, that will be amended. Tony Ricard, private citizen. Dave Robertson will now sit as a private citizen. Francois St. Amour, SNC board member. Benjamin DeHan, United Counties of Stormont, Dundas and Glengarry. Doug Thompson, private citizen. Ron Tuners, agriculture. And then of course our three ex officio board executive, George DeRoos as the South Nation chair, Pierre LaRue as the South Nation vice chair and Bill Smurl as the South Nation past chair. So again, the amendments will reflect that Glenn Mackey is now committee chair and Dave Robertson sitting as a private citizen. So it'll be a motion to approve as amended. Okay, having heard the recommendation, uh, is there any further comments? Uh, Bill, did you say you had an additional name to add uh, Rhonda? Um, I don't currently. Uh, just a reminder, though, that we did have um, a vacancy last year, which has not yet been filled from the Snowmobile Association. So we may have a future request to uh, replace John Bowles' uh, seat that has remained vacant since last year. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no further questions, I'd ask uh, for a mover and a seconder. Uh, Rhonda, you'll have to be my eyes because I'm on sure. the phone. I see um, L.A. And who else do we have here? Doug Thompson. Doug Thompson. Perfect. Thank you, Doug. Okay, so moved by uh, Elaine. 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 Yeah. And uh, moved and seconded by Doug Thompson. Uh, any opposed? And I'm seeing none. Carried. The next is the. Uh, 6C, which is update the SNC Forest Annual Report 2020, and we received that uh, report. We have, of course, the uh, information on uh, page 16 of the agenda, but we also received that report by separate email, and uh, most of you, I hope, have uh, looked at it. Uh, we'll let Pat go ahead and do a presentation on it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, of course, as Glenn mentioned, you received the port report. It covers the period from January 1st to December 31st of 2020. And I'll just go through a couple of highlights. Uh, we did acquire one new uh, property last year, and this has increased the entire forest area um, by 65 acres. Uh, we were compliant with all the operating standards and met the, our FSC requirements for last year, uh, and there are details in the report for that. Uh, staff training and development, we continue to uh, uh, do that on an annual basis, but uh, last year uh, uh, we were pleased to recognize that uh, Carolyn Goulet uh, became a registered professional forester uh, uh, so we now have three on staff. Um, we increased the number of silvicultural prescriptions written on the forest. Uh, we actually had one more than uh, uh, done, completed uh, over what uh, was uh, mentioned in the uh, budget. Uh, Likewise, we increased the area of tree marking and uh, harvest er uh, the harvest area. It was a very busy year last uh, year. Uh, we continued our tree planting efforts on SNC land, uh, and Chris has a report uh, on the reconciliation tree planting that was done on one of our more recent properties, SNC 164. Uh, we were able, to, as a result of all the uh, harvest uh, operations that were, took place, increase the harvest revenue. And we continued to make uh, uh, several improvements to the uh, uh, forest infrastructure. And with that, uh, uh, I'd have the committee receive and file this report. Are there any questions? I see Bill's hand is up, Mr. Chair. Mr. Smurl. Bill, go ahead. He's just unmuting himself. Thank you. I had trouble getting unmuted. 
I want to add that over the last five years, give or take, the uh, staff has done super jobs at putting out an annual report from each of these committees. Before that, it was kind of hit and miss. There was general information. But having a, um, an information uh, document like you're looking at for each of our committees, I think is great for the current and for future of South Nation. So compliments to staff on the job they've done, and I think it's really important to have it. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I have one, uh, Pat. The uh, yes. S&C 166, the new acquisition, uh, what type of tree cover is there? Or, uh, is it open land, or what's the nature of that property? It's a forested uh, property. Uh, it includes a Christmas tree plantation. Uh, it's located in uh, North Stormont. Uh, it was uh, registered under the uh, uh, managed forest tax incentive program and was managed for uh, many years. Um, and it was received under the ecological gifts program uh, and includes some uh, species at risk and uh, uh, important forest cover for that area. Thank you. If I uh, have no other further questions, the recommendation is the Forestry Committee receive and file the SNC Forest Annual Report 2020. I need a mover and a seconder. I'm seeing Maurice and Murray, if that works for them. Okay. Moved by Maurice, seconded by Murray. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, carried. The next item is the uh, uh, update on the forest certification audits, and that would be uh, Pat again. Thank you. It's Mr. on page Chair. 17 of your agenda. Uh, as the report notes, the uh, annual forest uh, audit was completed in uh, during uh, November and December of last year. Uh, during that audit, uh, four community forests are uh, audited, uh, uh, subject to field audit. Uh, one private commercial forest owner, and in this case, four private forest or uh, private forest owners were included in the 2020 audit. Uh, the members uh, are randomly selected for audit. Uh, in, in last year. Uh, both the as I mentioned before, both the SDG County and SNC Forest were not selected for field dot audit. Uh, highly likely that we will be this year. Uh, and just to summarize uh, the findings of that audit, uh, there was one minor nonconformity. Uh, this was reported on the uh, uh, the the small uh, forest areas, less than. 100,000 acres. Uh, what they found that there was, a, according to the uh, standards, there was an error in the calculations how many sites should have been sampled. And uh, uh, four were sampled, and it should have been seven. Uh, and this was corrected uh, uh, back in January of 2021 uh, by providing uh, audit information uh, for the auditors to review. Uh, the observation that was recorded was related to health and safety records. And uh, what they found was that one of the contractors didn't have the required certification for first aid training. They did have first aid uh, uh, equipment on site, uh, but under uh, Ontario's regulations, you have to have a certified uh, first aider looking after that. And it was just an observation. Uh, in terms of corrective action, uh, the uh, group certificate uh, uh, holder uh, sent out a uh, memo to everyone to make sure that this was uh, uh, taken care of. What we've done in terms of uh, uh, ensuring that is we've added this to our uh, uh, pre-startup uh, uh, inspection that we do with the contractors. So there's actually a a spot on the form to actually uh, confirm that the uh, contractor is in compliant uh, with this uh, requirement. Uh, 
uh, just a note uh, as a uh, as an employer in Ontario, SNC uh, isn't uh, compliant with this. Um, uh, we do have a certified first aider looking after all of our first aid uh, equipment. In terms of the internal audits that were performed uh, on both the uh, county forest and the SNC forest, uh, in terms of the SNC forest, uh, the, the audit occurred on January 27th, uh, 2021. It was a selective thinning. Uh, it was the Operation uh, Carolyn had shown you earlier on SNC 1617. Uh, it was noted in the report that it was a clean, efficient, and compliant uh, operation. Uh, both the her there is a heritage site and some species at risk identified on the property, and steps were taken to protect both of these uh, features. On the SDNG County Forest uh, Audit, which was performed on January 25th, uh, 2021, again it was a selective thinning. Uh, this occurred in the Warwick Forest on SDNG compartments 11, 12, and 13. Uh, what was noted was that the residual stand was in excellent condition. Uh, the overall trail network was uh, uh, in good condition. Uh, it was noted that there was a little bit of uh, rutting that uh, occurred, but it was addressed by the co contractor immediately. Uh, just to note, this is part of the uh, Warwick Forest Trail and the steps that the contractor took to uh, uh, keep the site clean and uh, uh, protect the trail itself uh, enabled us to open uh, uh, almost immediately after the uh, operation uh, stopped. The trail was closed for the duration of the operation. And again, uh, the operation was compliant with the standards. Are there any questions of Pat? I see a hand up from Doug. Doug? Yeah, just uh, to Pat, uh, uh, just uh, what is the... Uh, uh, the logging operation. What is the quality of our our trees? Do I, I just I'm not familiar. With, do they assess the quality of uh, the uh, trees that are cut? And if they do, what is uh, what is the quality of the trees harvested in the SNC properties? Well, the the overall quality ranges. Uh, generally, in a thinning, we're we're trying to take out the uh, the, the trees that likely won't survive to the next cutting cycle. This is 15 to 20 years. So we're taking, we, we attempt to take out the worst trees, uh, uh, which leaves the, the forestry in a, a very uh, good condition uh, in terms of what, what's left over. Uh, in doing that, uh, uh, in, in marking, we're also trying to uh, uh, complete a thinning regime which spaces the trees out. So there are some uh, better quality trees that, that are, are taken. Uh, these are normally directed uh, to the, the appropriate end use by the contractor who is trying to, of course, maximize his uh, profit. Any further questions? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. I'm not seeing the, uh, any additional hands. Okay, the motion is that the Forestry Committee receive and file the update on forest certification. I need a uh, mover and a seconder, please. I see Steve and Dorothy, if they're amendable. Okay, moved by Steve, second by Dorothy. Uh, any opposed? Dorothy has Hearing her hand Steve. up. Uh, Pardon? Dorothy, is, are you fine us to uh, second that motion? Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. Okay. Uh, motion's carried then. No, no opposition. The next uh, item is uh, six uh, E, which is the update on uh, the forestry committee received and filed the update on the forest health network. And that would I turn that over to Chris. 
It's on page 19 of your agenda. Chris, you're still muted. Yeah, I see that. I was yapping away and realized, oh, I didn't unmute myself. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to make it so I can read the report. Uh, again, this is uh, to uh, update the forestry uh, committee on the health network that we that South Nation belongs to. It's a number of organizations uh, across eastern Ontario that have all sort of come together to to work as a group to keep our eyes open of what's happening and how, how we can address these issues. So um, every year we, we, we usually have these meetings twice a year, sometimes three, um, and uh, it's, it's hosted at different, different areas usually, but this, this year being COVID, it's been online. So we all, all attend it and, and we talk about what's, what the province is seeing across the Ontario. Um, and then we discuss what's happening more focused on, on Eastern Ontario as well to see what's what's there, what's not happening, if it's something we should be worrying about, um, stuff we can talk to the public about if they if they're they think something's really bad. Like a good example of that would be the uh, the gypsy moth, you know, and, and we explain to them on how things cycle through these these events. So you know, even though it looks bad one year, the next year it'll be totally different. So. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in these meetings. Um, and then we also talk about things that are upcoming uh, that we should be watching out for. So a good example was like the EAB is still an issue. Uh, now we have the Asian gypsy moth and uh, hemlock uh, woolly aphidid. I think that's how you say it. It's and uh, these are these are right at our borders. So it's it's stuff that we try and keep our eyes on, and everybody sort of goes out and keep, keeps a focus on that to make sure we catch it right away. Um, and again, we do this all together, and and we have pictures come in from the public and questions coming in from the public, and and that really helps us. And that's where like the four stewards really come and help for us as well. So again, this is just to uh, keep you guys up to date on what's there, and you know just to receive and file the the report. Thank you, Chris. Are there any questions to Chris? I see Maurice's hand up. Go ahead. Maurice, you're, at, you're on mute, Maurice. Is the gypsy moth in Ontario now? Gypsy moth is, is here. Um, the Asian uh, isn't. So there's, there's different types of gypsy moth. So the gypsy moth is here. It's been introduced years and years ago. Um, the Asian gypsy moth is a new one that's coming in. And again, is just as as uh, as bad. So it's it's a matter of keeping our our eyes open for it, so that they can start start treatments right away as soon as we start seeing it. So it doesn't get out of control. We can get that cycle, uh, you know, going so that yeah, it does increase, but then eventually, the the different parasites and the different uh, um, disease they put into it will co come in. So it'll 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 become natural cycling in. And keep it under control. So that's the that's the goal of it. But yeah, there's the Asian isn't here, but the regular gypsy moth is. Thank you. Any other questions? Not I have one, uh, Chris. Chris, uh, could you uh, give me further information on the hemlock woolly Have a good. Um, basically, this this really it it walks through the uh, hemlocks stands pretty badly um, and it kills them and basically it's it, they're really hard to see it almost looks like a white uh, spider web kind of or a little cotton ball underneath of the leaflets so you know to see it it's 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 pretty tough to see um, so you're trying to look out at the out at the edge of the branches uh, you don't want to be looking up there when that's when there's snow on the branches because you just don't you can't tell the difference but there's a few different techniques they have that uh, help us spot it. So we haven't had to go to that route because we haven't found it yet in Canada, in Ontario, I mean. So the technique they have is it's a, it's a Velcro uh, tennis ball that you fire up through the canopy. And what it does is, is it passes through those branches. The, 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 the hemlock William Adelphi actually sticks to the tennis ball and it comes down and then we basically can tell that, it, that we have it or not. So other than that, it's it's just through binoculars, and it, we sort of know in Ontario where all the hemlock stands are, where it's heaviest, where it's 
where we have the odd scatter tree. So we try and look at those on a regular basis when we're out in the field. So, and it's not just us, it's like everybody. It's Prescott Russell, uh, LaRose, For or LaRose Forest, uh, Renfrew, um, Marlboro. You know, all of us are looking at the same time all the way across Southern Ontario through the range of, of this to make sure that we catch it before it gets here because it's another species we, we don't want to lose. And if we're not careful, it can, it can happen. What's the, what's the treatment for it? How do you control it? Um, I'm not sure yet how they're controlling it. I know they're trying a few different ta different things, um, and it's one of those things they just have to keep keep focusing on with different different sprays and chemicals. But you know, once once we have it, it's 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 pretty hard to get rid of. Okay. Thanks. Any further questions? If not, the uh Recommendation is the Forestry Committee receive and file the update on Forest Health Head Network. Uh, I need a mover and a seconder. I'm going to recommend Dave move and Archie second. Uh, if there are any comments from either of you, just a reminder, you are muted, so star six will unmute you. So again, move by Dave, seconded by Archie. Okay, move, move by Dave, seconded by Archie. Any opposed? Hearing none, carried. The next uh, recommendation is the Forestry Committee receive and file the update on the Emerald Ash Borer Parasitoite Release Project. And if I mispronounce that, please correct me. And that would be Pat uh, on page 2021. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, no, you did very well on the pronunciation. Uh, the committee might uh, recall that uh, we had we're partnering with the Canadian Forestry Service uh, back in uh, 2017 uh, to release uh, parasitic wasps that to control the emerald ash borer. There were three different uh, species of wasp, and you, you may recall that. Uh, to look at these things uh, with the naked eye, it just looks like uh, uh, pepper in your hand if you were to spread a few of them out. Uh, uh, but so they are quite small, and they uh, before they started this program back in 2014, they went through about 10 years of uh, scientific uh, research uh, to get the approvals because they are an exotic species uh, to get the approvals to release them in Canada. They are very host specific. They attack only uh, emerald ash borer. So they've been uh, considered to be safe for release. And since that time, they've uh, released uh, close to uh, 240,000 of these parasitic uh, wasps. Uh, when we started the program back in uh, uh, 2017 and we released uh, uh, insects during the or the wasps during the summer months between 2017 and 2019 and uh, the numbers are there in the uh, report i won't attempt to uh, uh, pronunciate the latin names of each uh, insect uh, but the generally the tets uh, we released close to 16,000 of those uh, the oobs uh, we re uh, released uh, 3,600, and the uh, Spathius uh, we re released uh, just over 2,000. Uh, so uh, these were uh, were released on two uh, different sites. Those two sites were part of the larger study uh, of 27 sites uh, through Ontario, Quebec, and New Brunswick. Uh, those two uh, sites were located, uh, one was located in the Two Creeks Forest and one was, uh, uh, the other site was uh, just off of 138 uh, near Monkland. So uh, in uh, 2019, uh, the Canadian Forest Service came down and they did a uh, destructive sample of the uh, uh, the release sites. Uh, a, uh, uh, cut uh, four trees at each site, and they transported those uh, trees as bolts, uh, short logs, uh, 
to the uh, Canadian Forestry Service Labs in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, so the plan was to keep them in cold storage and uh, uh, rear them later that winter, but then uh, of course the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic uh, uh, somewhat or, uh, cur curtailed their uh, activities, uh, but they were able to uh, rear them this year and they did the analysis back in December. And what they found was uh, uh, that the TETs, the, uh, the one that we released the uh, most of, uh, were very uh, successful, particularly at the Monklin site. Uh, they weren't as successful on the Two Creeks uh, site. Uh, the small quantity of uh, oobs that were released were found at both sites. Uh, uh, but there were no uh, uh, spathias uh, found. Uh, they cautioned us on the, uh, the early results, uh, saying that it takes uh, three years of sampling to determine whether a viable population has become uh, established. Uh, as I mentioned before, they uh, started this program in 2014, uh, and they've been having uh, uh, very good success with uh, both the uh, uh, tets and the ubius uh, wasps uh, on those sites. Uh, but they uh, caution it's still early in the development of the biological control program. Uh, like I said, the sites have been shown, uh, the releases have been successful. And they've also, uh, with further sampling, uh, been able to show that the spread of these uh, parasitic wasps is between uh, one and a half and five kilometers uh, uh, per year. So when they uh, become established, they start to move out and uh, control the uh, emerald ash borer uh, population. So the f for the future, uh, what they're hoping to be able to do is come back down to those two sites that uh, we have populations uh, released on and uh, do another round of sampling so that they can determine uh, how successful the release uh, program has been. A question from Bill, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Bill. Um, I have three questions, actually. The first one is, where do you get the wasps? Second, I heard you say you're still studying and you're going to be doing that into the future. So does that mean there will be no more releases for the immediate future or does it look successful enough to try releasing the first one or two in more areas? Well, the, the first question uh, was uh, uh, the wasps initially came from uh, a laboratory in Michigan and they were uh, supplied by the U.S. government. Uh, since the program began, the uh, Canadian Forestry Service has been able to establish their own rearing facilities in uh, Sault Ste. Marie. So the last uh, uh, few lots of uh, wasps that we received were uh, made in Canada. Uh, the uh, program, uh, we've been in contact with the, the uh, uh, staff at CFS. Uh, we're very open to uh, continuing to release uh, on new sites if it's warranted. Uh, they're under uh, travel restrictions with COVID-19, so it's very dependent on, uh, uh, it limits what they can do. Uh, but uh, for the future, I'm sure as the populations become established, uh, we'll be looking at more control uh, measures. Thank you. And I'm, I, I, I like the sound of doing more of them in the future. I look forward to hearing more on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? If not, the uh, motion reads the Forestry Committee receive and file the update on the S Emerald Ash Borer Parasite Release Project. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Bill to move and Ron to second. Moved by Bill, seconded by Ron. Yeah. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion's carried.
Pat, you're up again. It's the Forestry Committee receive and file the report on SNC forest related projects update, page 22 and 23 of your agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to update the the Forestry Committee uh, on these uh, projects. They're uh, not a, uh, our, our projects specifically. Uh, we are a partner in them in that we allow the uh, work to proceed on our, our properties. And it's basically uh, inventory and assessment work uh, related to specific scientific research. And we benefit from these projects through the knowledge gained uh, uh, in the research and from the assessments, uh, just our general knowledge on uh, uh, what's on our property in terms of the natural uh, environment. Uh, I'll just run through quickly through a couple of them. Uh, we uh, Last year we had a project with Carleton University. Uh, they were uh, set up some uh, uh, plots on 10 SNC properties where they were studying uh, the bi biodiversity of the plants, the birds, and the small mammals. And this adds to our general knowledge of the forest. Uh, we added uh, uh, 12 new uh, unrecorded species uh, to our list. Uh, they're, they're, they were quite common for those ecosystems. We just hadn't uh, observed them before, but that was uh, confirmation that they do exist on our pro properties. Uh, we did a study with, uh, or were permitted a study with the University of Guelph uh, on two of our uh, properties where they were looking at the spatial and temporal distribution of uh, arthropods, insects and spiders and so forth. And this just adds to the general uh, knowledge of our properties. Uh, Canadian Museum of Nature, uh, it was one of their botanists uh, who studies uh, uh, lichens and mosses, uh, uh, was doing some research to confirm the presence of a uh, uh, that hadn't been recorded since uh, the 1800s uh, in eastern Ontario. So uh, and they were quite anxious to uh, reconfirm that. I'm still waiting for the results on uh, that one, but uh, hopefully they were successful. Uh, might help uh, mention the Public Health Agency of Canada, who is uh, looking at uh, wild bird populations in the uh, human uh, uh, viruses and diseases that uh, uh, can be circulated in the human uh, uh, population. And uh, they were doing uh, research on, on that. Um, Natural Resources Ca Canada uh, were doing, uh, well, and we already mentioned the, uh, the work that we've done with the em Emerald Ash Borer. And that's just to mention a, a few of them. Uh, it wasn't meant to be a complete list, but uh, to, to let the committee know that uh, there is a lot of uh, activity that goes on in the forest uh, uh, that doesn't uh, make its way into our budget process, but it's uh, still valuable uh, work that uh, is supported by others. Uh, it just occurs on our property and adds to our knowledge. Thank you, Pat. Are there any questions to Pat? Hearing none, uh, I certainly congratulate Pat and, and his uh, forestry group. Uh, they've been very busy through uh, the COVID-19 era and uh, certainly haven't been sitting still. Uh, the recommendation we have, the motion is the Forestry Committee receive and file the report on SNC forest-related projects update. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Uh, Murray moving and Dorothy seconding. Moved by Murray, seconded by Dorothy. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion's carried. The next is the update on Indigenous Partnership. Chris? Yeah, again, it's if I hope you've had a chance to read it because I'm not going to go through it all. There's there's quite a list of things that we've been doing over the years. Um, 
And the unique thing is they, they sort of all relate back to everything we do within forestry from species at risk to just biodiversity. Um, you know, we look at habitats, uh, quality of habitats, and, you know, we're looking at the, from an ecological aspect uh, from science, um, is no different than the way we look at it in traditional knowledge wise from the Aboriginal components. It's the thing we look at is how, how the two can be worked together. Um, and that's the unique thing we've been doing for the last 20 years, which people are just starting to realize that, you know, this methodology of, of working together through a process that's called two-eyed seeing, where we're looking through two different lenses, one through the traditional knowledge, the other through the science, um, you know, and looking at those, we're, we're getting a better understanding. And that's the unique thing is we've already been doing this for years. Um, and, you know, we're, we're ahead of most people on the way they're thinking. And, and the unique thing is just how quickly these, these partnerships have, have worked and uh, the, the benefits it's helped us with, you know, just identifying the different species on, on the landscape that we probably wouldn't have thought of. Um, like black ash is not a species that we'd normally look at. It's, it's not a merchantable timber, but yet for the Mohawk people and other basket makers, it's million dollars, you know, that they, they look at yearly for it. So it's understanding those things is, is helping us to broaden our knowledge on how, how we should be looking at the environment. What, what can we do to benefit? And it's, it's our partners that really help us to do this. So we have, you know, the Algonquins of Pikwaknagon. We have the Algonquins of Shabatabajuan, which is up in the Charbot Lake area. We have the Mohawks uh, from Akwesasne. We've worked, uh, we've done work with the Mohawks from uh, Ganawagi in Quebec. Um, the uh, Ojibwe's of Hiawatha. We've done uh, the Ojibwe's from uh, Alderville. So we we do a lot of these cross cultural partnerships so that we we get a better understanding of how how everything is linking together. So it's it's been a unique thing, unique partnership, and it'll continue on. Um, we have a couple new projects coming up uh, that we, we've talked about already. This this year is about you know, looking back at the uh, the healing place, expanding it, developing a couple new ones um, further out from our area um, for the First Nations uh, within the traditional lands. So it's it's really, really, really unique. unique. And then the new one that we're looking at for uh, the next two years is a species at risk with the with our First Nation partners, and we'll be looking at, I believe, it's seven different species. So Monarch butterfly, coarse, western coarse frog, black ash, uh, Algonquin wolf, and three different bats that are, are found within, you know, our, our watershed as well. So it's a great opportunity for us to do more work um, together and to gain more knowledge of what's here in our natural environment, which ties right back into the natural heritage strategy that the, the counties are working on right now. So these are... It just shows how our relationships all tie back together. So it's a great opportunity. And, and again, it's just to uh, keep the board, to keep the uh, committee updated on what's going on. Um, most of these things you can you can find or just ask us. We'll talk gladly talk to you about it or if you want to be involved more with it. So it's, it's just to keep you guys informed of what's happening. Thank you, Chris. Are there any questions of Chris? Perhaps just a comment, Mr. Chair, the working relationship that's been developed is excellent. And the knowledge that's gained both scientific and um, from years of uh, and generations of, um, of practice by the different groups is, is excellent. So we have a partnership that's, uh, that's very positive and um, almost more unique to Eastern Ontario than other parts at this stage. And I'm pleased that uh, this partnership is moving along. Thank you, Bill. Hearing no further questions, the motion reads the Forestry Committee receive and file the Indigenous Partnership Update Report. I need a mover and a seconder, please. I have Elaine moving and Dave Robertson seconding. Moved by Elaine and seconded by Dave. Any opposed? Hearing seeing none, the motion's carried. And that covers off the new business section. And uh, once again, the uh, 
uh, forestry group at South Nation have been very, very busy through the last year. And looks like they have a busy year ahead of them, too. Uh, supplemental agenda, there is none. So we move to correspondence, which is page 27 and 28 in your agenda package. Rhonda, and do we, you want to... Uh, yeah, we've just included this for information purposes. Um, Pat, is there anything you'd like to add as far as the... Um, the Ontario Professional Foresters Act review. So what we've included is Ontario Conservation Ontario's uh, comments that were pulled together from various conservation authorities. Uh, just that I concur with the uh, response from uh, Conservation Ontario. I did have an opportunity back in uh, 2000 to conduct a uh, survey of all of the conservation authorities in terms of compliance with the Ontario Professional Foresters Act, and at that time, uh, the majority of uh, conservation authorities uh, would have no uh, issues in uh, relations to compliance with that uh, legislation. Uh, Pat, I'm just wondering, yes. uh, with most uh, acts, there's regulations to go along with them that implement the uh, the, the uh, focus of the uh, act. Uh, are there a lot of regulations related to this act? No, I wouldn't say a, a lot, but there, um, uh, and I think that's the uh, um, the subject of the review uh, in defining uh, uh, the uh, specific roles of. Uh, under the uh, Ontario Professional Foresters Act and the uh, related uh, professions such as uh, biologists and ecologists that might carry out work uh, in relation to uh, forests. And it's a redefining of that, uh, those uh, uh, regulations. Thank you. Does anyone else have uh, questions? Hearing none, uh, we don't have a motion in relation to correspondence, so we'll move to the next, which is roundtable discussions. Community engagement. We so again, uh, I don't see a lot going up. I, I know it's a little bit challenging these days to really have a lot of uh, in-person uh, events, but if you have anything from your groups that you wish to share, um, now is the time to do so. Mr. Chair, I, it's Bill. I have not much to share, but my apologies. I have to leave at this stage for an appointment, so I will double check back with you as to what has happened. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bill. Have a good day. Uh, and Francois's hand just went up. Francois? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's for Pat. Pat, you you talked about uh, you're dealing with the Upper Canada Snowmobile Club. Is it the same that's going around in our neck of the woods? Yeah, yes, that, that's correct. Uh, with regard to the signing uh, of agreements, yes. If if they do come and see the municipality to sign agreements, because uh, you know, we we've had to take in. Take out a a a rigged bridge that uh, the population thought it was uh, dangerous, and it to in our standards it was, but they never contacted us to, to put up a bridge in our uh, right away and stuff like that. And now they're all upset. Well, you gotta open up the communications. Uh, I hope at SNC it's better if they ever want to build bridges like that. Yes, they. I, I, I think it, it, in the future uh, communications will be better. They've centralized uh, it to the district level. At one time, it was uh, uh, it was solely left up to the individual clubs, uh, but it's since been, like I said, centralized. And the new uh, executive director is uh, very uh, forthcoming and uh, easy to deal with. Uh, well, so I would look. I, I would look for some improvements. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
because uh, uh, we definitely had to play the bad boys, but uh, if they want to use our, our, our right of ways, uh, they got to talk to us. That, that's all. Yes. Any other uh, comments? I'd like to uh, say that uh, just uh, locally, we have a new sawmill operation going just west of Spencerville. Uh, he's just up and going into production. Uh, I heard the other day that he's getting trying to get 35 tractor trailer loads of uh, pine in before uh, the uh, half loads go on. Uh, he has, I believe, four employees working with him. Uh, built a new uh, uh, facility, uh, brand new facility. Uh, he's a bandsaw operation, and I understand he's going to have uh, uh, drying facilities there as well. So I haven't been down to see him yet uh, because of COVID-19, but uh, in the future I would expect to no, be in touch with him. His name is Dave Malcolmson. And uh, I know whether you're aware of him, Pat. I, I did see a, a, an email uh, just that he was looking for uh, 35 tractor trailer loads, but uh, I wasn't aware of uh, uh, anything about his operations. Uh, where was that located? It's on County Road 21, just west of Weir Road. Be on the south side of the road. This, uh, it's uh, pine. He's also got cedar, I believe, from what I've heard. But uh, okay. it's uh, uh, a local a local market for cedar would be uh, appreciated. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Anyone else? Not. Uh, as far as uh, engagement with other groups, uh, Bill and I both sit on the ALICE committee, and uh, we're just waiting for our funding uh, to come down through the uh, ALICE Ontario, and I uh, was looking forward to having a busy year again. And we work closely with South Nation as well as with uh, Raisin River and uh, do a number of uh, projects jointly. Uh, Any other comments? I could just add to that Cheyenne and Carol are often involved with some of those Alice projects on the tree planting side for sites that qualify for the 50 million tree program. Yes, yes, the, uh, their name comes up, their names come up quite re uh, frequently down there. So. Nothing else? If not, uh, upcoming events, and I guess we turn that back to Rhonda. Sure. So we have the Eastern Ontario uh, First Nation Working Group meeting scheduled for March 9th. Um, this is going to be a virtual meeting, so uh, we've not broadcasted the, um, the meeting link as broadly as we have in the past. Again, just to try to, to manage um, meeting flow via Zoom. Uh, if you are interested in attending that meeting, please let Christopher know and uh, we can loop you into that one. And again, we're hosting um, our SNC Forced Contractors meeting on April 1st. Uh, it will also be um, via MS Teams at 10 a.m. And again, this is a chance to touch base with local logging contractors to let them know what's coming up, to hear any concerns or questions they might have on our operations. So we've started, restarted these annual meetings last fall and are hoping that with the uh, with the half loads being April 1st, that we'll have um, a bit higher of a turnout this year for that. So if you're interested in sitting in on that one, uh, let uh, myself or Carolyn or Pat know. And that's it for upcoming meetings. Um, our next meeting date is June 1st. At this point, uh, we are assuming it will be virtual, again, starting at 10 a.m. Thank you, Rhonda. Uh, this, uh, we certainly covered a lot of uh, material today, and uh, thank uh, the staff for all their uh, uh, preparation going into the meeting and participation of the uh, people that were able to join us today. With that, I'd ask for a motion of adjournment. I have Francois moving and Stephen Hunter seconding. Francois moved, Stephen Hunter seconded. Any opposed? Rarely do we get opposition to an adjournment. If not, I declare.
the meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.